Welcome, MCFD Live. It's uh, 113th. Can you guys believe how long we've been hanging out together? And tonight, unlike any other night we're having, we're, it's kind of a historical night in the studio because for the second time, we're having a Jedi esthetician that's just crushing it on social media. Miss Felicia, step light. For, before I tell you about Felicia, give it up for her, will you guys? Because she is just, she's the bomb. And... Um, she uh, is, uh, I, I'm calling it, you know, she had a, like a $70,000 first year as an SD eyebrow Jedi master, and she's trending to crack a hun this year. Arch Brow Studio as well as uh, Art Salon and Spa are the two. She's, you know, like, you know, a service provider, salon owner. Her story's just extraordinary. Her coach is watching tonight, too, and that is Victoria Perry. She's in the house. Give it up for Victoria, will you guys? See, they're really, really good. They're, they're good people. So before I bring her on, let me just tell you why I invited her to be on. Because you just can't, like, you know, like ring the doorbell and get into uh, get into the show. You know, like I said, she's she's having a big year be uh, as as an SD level four A uh, on the front end of thirty something. Look at that average service day as an esthetician twelve hundred dollars. That's like you know. Uh, that's a big boom, boom to the 10th power average service ticket, $112. Estes, I hope you're looking at this because this is a vision of what's possible. Trending at 150 referrals a year, and most of those referrals now are going to other people that uh, she is uh, bringing into the fold because she's just crammed, rammed, and jammed with people that want to serve her. Uh, rebooking, um, you know, I put... Uh, d d d a question mark because she's like running at just this side of uh, th uh, th three figures. Her RTS is off the chart as well. Um, she's uh, she, she's going to tell you her story, but in, in in essence, her timeline is she graduates high school in 04, goes to hair school in, in 2010. She's, got, she's on kind of a wild ride from 11 to 16, opens up Archbrow in 17, just crushes it her first year. Like she, she would say, I was slammed. By the time I turn the key, 2018, you can see what she's trending. It's just nothing short of uh, remarkable. And why? Because, as, you know, while she's a master at her craft, she also understands social media and, and the social digital experience and how to use social to, you know, blow up her income. Uh, seven plus iPhone, so she's in the game. 2,700 followers on her uh, IG page. Most of the guests that she serves are following her. And uh, the overwhelming majority of referrals, the genesis of that is uh, is social media. So none of this by now is uh, front page news. She, uh, uh, in any given week, probably 30 guests a week. Um, every guest gets a photo shoot. I'm, you're going to love her uh, best practice on social after she tells her story. Five to ten pics per shoot. She's texting all of the pictures to her guests, and it's a surprise how she it does that. It's just, I think you're going to really enjoy uh, how she states that. Um, and most of the guests uh, are reposting uh, the content that she sends to them or selfieing or and for sure tagging her. So as she'll tell you, it's very much part of the culture. So I think what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, see if the Wi-Fi guys are behaving themselves. And then we're going to bring her on. She's going to tell her story. And then we'll have her talk about her uh her, uh, what she's doing on social. So uh, keep your fingers crossed, Rob. We'll see if we can bring her up. And there she is. Give it up for her, will you guys? Because she's... Uh... <laughs> did you uh, did you hear me uh, bragging on you? Yeah, that was hard to listen to. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it's nice to have you on tonight. Thanks for taking time out of your, uh, out of your busy day. Oh, no problem. Well, um... I, we always like to start with the story because the more we interview, that, that's a very important part of the work, Felicia. So your story, I've had the opportunity to hear it as I was uh, kind of like the, the interview before the interview, and it's profound. So let, get us started with what, what your life was like before you decide to go to, you know, cause school and what that was all about. Um, my life was a little all over the place. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I wanted to be. Um, I didn't have a clear direction. Um, I knew I wanted to be in the beauty industry, but I wasn't sure if that, if 
I would be successful in that industry. So that's kind of where that was at for and sure. You, and you always wanted to be a hairdresser, but your parents discourage it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where that blurred vision is. <laughs> like, there's no benefits, there's no money, you're going to work nights, weekends, all these so not good things. They're sending you to college. Go to college and get get oh, you know get a degree, right? Yes, for sure. And then somewhere in there, you uh, you uh, be, be a, you're a mom plus you're going to college, and at some point, uh, you're saying, "I don't want to do this. I want to do something else." What was that about? Yeah, so I was a preschool teacher for at the time. I don't remember how many years, and for a few years at that point, and. Uh, I had my son, and once I had him, it was kind of like I was living for more than just myself, and I wanted to find some happiness, and I decided to go to aesthetic school. So I was working um, in the daytime from 8 to 5, and then I went to school from 5.30 to 8.30, um, and that's kind of how that journey began. Yeah, I mean that that was big because as I you you were saying that the combination of working full time during the day, going to night school, and I think there was a drive time in there. I what did you tell me? Yeah. Forty five minutes or an hour one way and back and Yes. So I drove from a couple cities in between there and it was it was a lot going on. Um I felt a ton of mom guilt, um, but I knew I just kept my eye on the prize at the end of that. I knew it would pay out eventually. So you get on the back end of that, and now you got your, your you know, you got your SD license. You graduate, and by the way, you were yeah, at the time. Now it's called Summit Salon Academy. So you're a graduate graduate, an alumni of Tacoma. So thank you, Michael Shea, and uh, and Mrs. Shea as well. Uh, then so you end up starting to be an SD, and you're an SD at I think Nordstrom's or something, and you something happened. You start having some big ahas about that. What was that about? When I first graduated, um, I kind of just wanted to take a break and just work because I was so exhausted. I was exhausted during school. It was a lot. Um, so I just took a little break and then I wanted to, um, I just wanted to breathe at that point. And then I started applying for jobs around my neighborhood, you know, in the area. I didn't find anything, couldn't find anything. And then uh, Nordstrom, about that one was about an hour away they um, were hiring for um, the Anastasia brow bar so it was just doing brows at that time um, and I just figured I was a teacher so I could do that during the summer that was my goal it was just oh this will just be a little playtime job it'll be a hobby it'll be fun right so, right you 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 remind me of me like you know working almost 24 7 3 6 5 so Plus, you're a mom, and you, know, you get, your life is like you got a lot going on. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then you keep the drive thing going. When you're at Nord Nordy's, you have to. I think there's what is it a three hour commute, both what uh, you know, round trip. So it's about an hour and a half each way. Now, at some point in the story, you find something closer to you, and there was this. Uh, there was another upscale salon spa, and you start crushing it. And I somewhere in there you have this big insight that I I think I can make some money doing this. What was yeah. that about? At Nordstrom, it was definitely eye opening to where you can do what you love and be really happy. So I've been very appreciative of that. So I found wow, I can really do what I love. And then um, there was a spa across town that was just my dream job. It was beautiful. It you know such high ratings, great place to work for. Um, and that's where I learned this could be a real career. Yeah. I mean, as I've gotten to know you in the interview, you know, everyone has that part in the story called something happened where whatever you want to call it. I had my OMG, the great divine aha, the big bang where you're going, you know, I can really make a lot of money doing this, doing what I love. And, and it sounds like at that point, that was a definable moment in your career. Oh, yeah, for sure, that I was able to work. Uh, I think I was just working four days at that time, and to be able to pay the bills and take care of my son and live a really good life on doing what I love. And then, so, you, you, and it, when you decide to do your, your first salon, you, you resign at this salon that you're at, the salon spa, and you said something to me that I thought was really, really 
clean, ethical. You you said I I I want to. I didn't want to exploit the salon that I work. I'm using my words now that I didn't like want to rip them off. So when you left, it was really a classy exit when you started your salon. Talk about that. Yeah, I felt like I left in the best way possible um, in the manner that I didn't, while I was working, I didn't um, tell anyone that I was leaving. I told um, just the only one person that I told was uh, a lawyer who knew, like, I, I had no idea what I was doing. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to talk to you. And that was just the one person that I did. But um, I respected the company that I worked for a ton and I didn't want to steal any phone numbers or market on their dollar or um, I just felt like what they gave me was so valuable that I wanted to really respect that. Cool. And then so you you leave to start Archbrow Studio. You're, you're very free. It's a startup and you got 800 square feet. And you mm -hmm. said, from the time I turned the key and I'm quoting you now, I'm slammed. Oh, yeah. Like, like, so all of a sudden, and like, what, what was that like? Because most, that's not the case for mm -hmm. most startups. It's a slow, it's a slow drip and you gushed from like the first hour. Um, that's what I assumed. I assumed I was going to be really slow. So I didn't have the most beautiful place to start out because I thought, okay, I'm just going to have a few walk-in stra you know, stragglers. Um, coming in, I can get give myself time to get going. And from the day that I opened, it was slammed. Um, but I, looking back, I've been open two years now. Looking back, I think it's because I included everyone on social media in the process. Yeah, that, so, I mean, that's what that when you and I were when, as I was getting to know you, I kept saying, "So how'd that happen?" And it was all, all of the branding, all of the work that you did on social prior to your startup. It, oh, it was yeah. like, and that I think is unprecedented. That's something that's new. That was never has never. That's a new phenomenon, and and you were you made that discovery. Now the other thing mm -hmm. that you said that I thought was really cool is you start working with, your your you're starting to hire now, and mm -hmm. um and your 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 first employee from almost hour one just like you she gets slammed and she triples or quadruples her income. Talk a little bit about that part. Yeah, so um, I had, it was supposed to just be me going out on my own solely by myself. Um, I had never planned to have an employee ever, um, but I was so booked that I wanted my guests, I was turning a lot of guests away, but I wanted them to be able to have that experience. Um, and so I thought, okay, if I teach somebody what I know, I can, um, they'll still be able to be serviced. And that's what I did. So I trained her with all the knowledge that I knew, technical skills. And then um, we got her on the books rolling. Just, it was all my overflow. And, and somewhere in here, you do mm -hmm. Summit and you start working with Victoria uh, Perry, and, and she, which is, she's like the spa god you know, at, yeah. at Summit. And so now it's almost like you're pouring nitroglycerin on your bonfire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, basically I hired Victoria. I went to the Summit because um, I have always wanted, I love the Summit because we have something to look forward to. So you're gonna move up goals and I'm a goal-oriented person. I always wanna work towards something. Um, so I thought the Summit, the summit would be perfect because it gave me something. It gave me structure in my business, right, so right. And, I was and able. To so so now you're like now you got that cooking. So before I kind of pivot to social, I, you're in a place today that's diametrically opposite of the place that you were, you know, two, three, four years ago. And frankly, Felice, you're at a place it, where people that have got 30, 40 years in the business aren't at, and you're on the front end. And I think people watching this are curious, like, what's your life like now? What, the day in the life of Felicia, what, what is that in a nutshell, and how is that different than the way it was? Um, I, I think I live a beautiful life. I'm very happy and very, um, I love where I'm at. It's very, um, I work really hard for that. I don't want to get that misconstrued at all because I do work really hard, but I can work 
when I want to work and when I want to put that. So when the kids are asleep and I'm wide awake, I can put in the work that needs to be put in. And and now you're going into schools and and you know people that are starting on the front end, you you'll go in and tell your story as a vision of what's possible as people who are walking to adversity because to go to school it is adversity. It's really, really hard, and a lot of people don't make it. So you're, you've become like a, a beacon of light. So, we got a few minutes left with you, and I want. I'm just dying to have you talk about what you're doing in social media and how you've made it a part of your salon, spa company. Yeah. So, um, social media is just a part of the culture here. If you don't take pictures as an employee, you feel. A little bit different um, because there are so many people around you taking pictures um, and it's it draws the client or the future client that you want to get it kind of opens their imagination on what they're going to get when they come here um, so that's a big plus um, we recently started just sending people their pictures um, how that happened was someone sent me my before and after the hairstylist who did my hair and I immediately wanted to post it because the work that she did was so beautiful and uh, the picture that she took was so beautiful. So I thought, well, I'm going to start sending my clients their before and afters so they can post those. And that's, I think, as I was interviewing you, that was the part that I thought was a real, really, really, really cool point of difference. That the gift with purchase is, first of all, every guest in, engages in some sort of photo shoot experience, which is kind of, that's like the, you know, like the, uh, the, the, the gift with purchase, if you will, what, you know, the, the glamour shot experience. Mm -hmm. And then you, you're, you're figuring out how you're getting that content to your guest mobile devices. So out of the blue, the guest gets a text from you. It's like, what's this? And it's almost like they've got their photo album and you're saying that is a knock your socks off experience oh yeah for sure i think so and even if they don't post it they're more likely i feel like to send it to their friends um because their friends inquire a lot a lot of referrals are word of mouth so you can send they can forward that picture here's a before and after i, I, I love it i just love how you're you're figuring out through innovation and pioneering how to make the, the, not just the social media experience, but now the social digital experience, part of the guest experience from coming in and consultation and photo shoot on the back end. So what you're doing is extraordinary. We're out of time. So we need, I need to say goodbye to you. I want to know if we can stay close to you, check in with you on the back end of the year, because you're now like on a vertical trajectory. Like you're, you're like moving at Mach five and we're all going to be curious to see, uh, what you look like, you know, like on the fourth quarter of this year. So are you cool with that? Uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait to share with you guys. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for hanging out with us, and we're going to give it up for you one more time, and then we're going to say goodbye. <laughs> thank you, Felice. Hey, have a good evening. All right, have a, uh, have a good evening yourself. All right, bye. Nice interview, you guys. Uh, extraordinary interview. And uh, you know, before saying goodnight, I wanna I wanna show you the uh, the slide that her and I kind of put together that really states her um, her uh, uh, her uh, social media um, uh, uh, the plan because it it like I said it, it's extraordinary. So what I, what I really want you to get is every guest gets a photo shoot, and like every guest. So that now has been, it, that's as much a part of the guest experience as a consultation is. They would not think of not engaging the guest. So Glamour Shots now is a, a gift with purchase in her salon company. It's about, five, it's about a five to 10 picture shoot, three or four poses. And, and this is the biggie. They text all the pictures to the guest. And it's a surprise. So the guest gets all of a sudden, oh, my God, I, I've got, I'm gotten an album of the pictures that I've taken that were taken of me. So it's a real cool surprise. It's and she would say it's part of our culture. It's part of our brand. It's part of our culture. And frankly, I think that's that's part of why they're growing at such an extraordinary pace. 
Um, and she again, she was inspired by that because when she was a client getting her hair cut, somebody did that with her and for her. So she and she said, you know what, I'm going to adopt that. Now, again, like always, a, a lot of those guests now are reposting to their pages and then tagging the salon. So don't look now, but that's like a jillion dollar nugget. So awesome interview tonight. I just loved uh, how... Um, uh, the, the, the this kind of came together and uh, and 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 uh, it was extraordinary to have our second SD, the second SD, and now we're about three weeks away. I just interviewed, did a pre-interview today of a massage therapist that I'm going to bring on uh, uh, in in a few weeks as well. So we're we're bringing in more of our salon, our, our spa community. So uh, great show. Um, be, you know, before signing off, I always like to. Uh, refer our, our friends to uh, uh, Summit Salon's website, hanging out with um, all of our uh, episodes have been recorded. They're uploaded on uh, YouTube, so you can get all that information on summitsalon.com. Uh, you know, re- hang out on our product store with our social media planners now. Uh, if you are new to us, uh, invite a Summit coach to do a scorecard. So there's just a whole lot of really cool stuff ha- happening in the Summit Salon community. So I want to make sure you have that. And last but not least, I always like to end in gratitude. So we are sponsored by L'Oreal PPD, Professional Product Division. And and in there now we have um, uh, L'Oreal, Professional, Redken Purology, Matrix, Kerastase, um, and it goes on and on. And now we just, uh, part of the family is uh, Pulp Riot. So we're really, really excited about that. So uh, wonderful show. Want to uh, bid you a farewell and uh, look forward to seeing you for episode 114.